My name's Rhapsody, and last episode, I proved decent competency at Risk of Rain. So this time, we're gonna go right back up to Monsoon for the hardcore players, because that's me. Hardcore Risk of Rain player. And we're gonna be going with the Huntress, because that's the easiest class. No questions about it. You can argue what your favorite class is, but if you're playing single player, I would have to... Probably just outright overrule you and say that the easiest single player class is Huntress. I'm sorry. It's just true. Alright, <clears throat> so I'm going to be trying to stack up all the decent lights that I see here. That's items, by the way, I'm not talking racially. Got a pro. Oh, this is not good. Damn it. Oh, I fired it at the wrong time. Could have done extra damage considering it's explosive and I could have positioned it well. But getting two, uh, two goat hooves on the first level and crit glasses, really good. Especially considering how much I love these goat hooves. Oh, I, I do. Uh, that wasn't me saying that I do love Goat Hooves, that was actually me accepting their wedding vows. I do. Goat Hooves are now married with me. We are married to one another. For some reason that was very difficult to me to think of the wording of married to one another. Got it, and then got that one as well. Oh, man. Burning Witness is actually really interesting. So anytime you kill someone, you get plus 5% uh, movement speed, and you'll be leaving a trail of fire behind you. Kind of like if you're 88 miles per hour in a DeLorean. Ooh, almost left off there. So I am going to have, like, all of the items that I have so far, all three of them, contribute heavily to move speed. So I'm going to have some... Pretty shit hot move speed as we go on here. Um, go with that. That's a... Yes. It's a Hermit Scarf. I knew it was behind there. I could recognize the item behind. And I believe when you purchase items that are overlaid on one another, you get the item that is behind. Someone may have to double check me on that one. I'm not certain, but I'm pretty sure that you get the item that is behind. And Hermit Scarf's pretty good. I'll get that, because it's probably better than a random white item. So. I'll also get the crit glasses. Because it's definitely better than a random white item. Well, I mean, I guess there are other white items like the rusty blade and... Um, I struggled to think of others, but I'm sure they exist. The rusty blade. And there is another one. Fuck it. Rusty Blade and Crowbar, yes, that I would actually um, cherish the existence of far greater. Now, just because of my move speed, I actually do have the time to go back, pick up the Fussling Bungus, and then go back again. Um, I'll just quickly make sure there's nothing over here, because I'd probably like a random white item. Okay. Random white item. More than a bustling fungus. But I will fossil my bungus. Yeah, I mean, I guess in the future it might help me in um, Providence Shrine situations, so. That's how far ahead I'm thinking. I'm thinking 40 minutes ahead of where I am playing right now. Yes, get on the level that I am on. <clears throat> As I clear my throat very vocally directly into the microphone and take a swig of water so that I can continue talking, let's move on to the next level. Ooh, meat chunks. Hmm. Delightful. Sounds nutritious. As long as they are nondescript industrial grade meat chunks. I will probably play this with reckless regard, uh, disregard for my health. Oh shit, that's right, I have Fussling Bungus. This is actually pretty good, because I can just stand still. And then, oh, and a war banner? I can probably play this until it's on. Definitely, actually. Well, unless it grows outside of the health pool that I have. 
Obviously, I have to do this now because the health shrine will not exist as soon as I hit the um, the teleporter event. The health shrines die at that point. They disappear forever. Oh, Soldier Syringe. That's really good. Now, just to heal back up. I am, I'm, I'm glad I did that. Soldier Syringe is a really good payout to have gotten there. I'm not particularly stressed about the rest of my health. I think I can just walk it off. And then, and then that one. Fuck. Oh, oh, shit. Okay. So, the problem is, I want to level up in meaningful areas so that when I drop the war banner, the war banner drops, obviously, on level up, uh, I drop it in a good area that I want to be staying in often. Um, obviously, that's going to be near the boss or near an area where a lot of enemies will spawn while I fight a boss. Also, I need to get to the teleporter event, like, right now. I have been dilly-dallying. Dilly-dally dawdling for way too long. I don't know why I start killing single targets. It's really dumb. I think that's why I'm losing so much recently, because I've forgotten that you actually can't do what I do in this game, and that's farm. You can't do that on Monsoon. You can't just sit there and farm all of the opponents. This is a message to you. Like, don't kill that spitter. I say to myself, as I kill the spitter. Alright. I mean, at this point, that drone's probably worth it, because I am going to get enough gold to clear out all the items on this level that I want. Ooh, golden gun. That could be extra damage if I didn't pick up that, um... That drone. We'll see. Maybe if I get arms race, the drone will be worth it. Shit, I leveled up in a bad position again. Obviously, it becomes more difficult to level up the more levels you have, so... You know, gotta make the early ones count. War Banner is an early game item. Does not scale well into the later game. Dead Man's Foot drops a poison trap at low health. It doesn't actually drop it at low health. It drops it when you take a very small amount of damage, actually. So, it's actually quite good. Um... But, again, I don't want to be taking damage at all, so hopefully it's not necessary. Ancient Wisp. Oh, no. First off, I missed out on that health shrine. Secondly, Magma Worm is disgustingly annoying. Thirdly, I just got two elite mushrooms up here. Ugh. Elite Mushrooms, just the amount of damage they do is vaguely against the Geneva Convention. If not physics itself. Okay. So, I'm getting much better with the, um, with the trail here. Well, not skill-wise, I'm just... Uh, my performance in the game is going to be much more successful now that I have this trail of fire going behind me at all times. Huh? Yep, boo. Go this way. Under that way. Uh, and then over this way as well. So this is a meaningful placement for a um, war banner. It's in a really good position for me to consistently use it in this battle. The problem is, when I am bounded to such a small area, the enemies are likely going to be hitting me... Another Burning Witness? I don't even know how those stack. Hmm, that's interesting. I didn't even think it was possible to get two Burning Witnesses. But, evidently. Because I've done runs that are like three hours long, and I fought a lot of Magma Worms and never got Burning Witness. So. Ah, crit glasses are pretty good. I mean... When I was failing those shrine chances, I was actually upping my crit percentage because I had the um, Snake Eyes item. Anytime you fail a shrine, it gives you a stack of crit percentage. Um, when you succeed a sh uh, shrine, by the way, you lose all of that. So succeeding the shrine and it giving me crit uh, percentage chance was actually kind of weirdly equaling. It's an, it's an odd equaling force in the universe. I'll say that much. 
Harvest. Harvest the Scythe makes me very happy about the amount of critical stuff I have going on. I like the Bitter Root, but the Unstable Stopwatch is the most powerful item in the video game. I am going to go out on a limb and say it is the most powerful item in the video game. Being able to stop time uh, and get yourself out of a dangerous situation, being able to stop time and heal up a little bit, being able to stop time and then just destroy the enemy that is in front of you that is posing a threat, it's, it's actually, in my opinion, too powerful. Also, it stops the progression of difficulty. The game does not count the time that the game is paused as increasing your difficulty level. So if you just, you know, use it every time it's off cooldown, you can lower the difficulty for yourself, basically. Uh, especially if you happen to get things like Rapid Mitosis, um, or Beating Embryo, and you can double the length of the time that it is frozen for, or you can reduce the cooldown of the use item. So I'm going to run over this way immediately so I can pick up uh, Acrid, so that I can get some early gold on this level, so that I can not have to farm as much. So basically, I'm farming a very difficult dude so that I don't have to farm later. Now I'm just using it every time it's off cooldown. I know, really suboptimal situation to use that in there, but it was off cooldown. So every 60 seconds, you basically get an 8... For eight free seconds of um, progression. So that's kind of like almost one seventh um, of the time that you take is just completely discounted. Obviously, it gets way better when you um, stack up some effects that make your use items better. Like, as I said, use item cooldown reduction. Uh, great. Yeah, I'm not- I'm not gonna replay that drone, ever. Like, it's just- it's the shitty level 1 drone. No reason to get it back. Mm hmm down here. Oh, old box. It's a red item, so I appreciate the color. We'll have to see how much it plays into the actual effects of the video game for us, though, before we make any judgments. Oh, that's right. Time needs to be stopped. Where is Acrid again? Did Acrid just literally leave the map? Where the fuck? Acrid despawned. I have never seen that happen before. Acrid can apparently just fuck off. Wow. I didn't think anything with a health bar could do that. Well, you know, the big health bars at the top of the screen. I didn't think anything that had one of those could um, just, you know, peace out. But apparently, Acrid can. Uh, Colossus, please. Here we go. Imp Overlord. Kind of like a Colossus, except nothing like a Colossus. So, you know. That's a thing that's happening. <clears throat> Um, this is going to get rapidly overwhelming very quickly. That, uh, all of those guys glowing green and taking a lot of damage is thanks to the, um, dead man's foot. Dropping a poison trap in my feet. Obviously, you can tell I wasn't on low health when that happened, so it isn't about low health, it's about taking damage. So that thinned out the crowd a lot. Also, I apparently feared, like, a lot of them with the old box at the same time. That's pretty good. Getting a lot of fears in there. Call me Dr. Jonathan Crane. Because I'm basically a scarecrow. Oh, fuck. Imp Overlord. Shit. I'm actually losing a lot more health than I am gaining. And I should not be operating in that fashion for too long. Because then I will lose. You know when you go below zero health in a game, you generally die. That kind of thing holds up. Oh, come on. See, I'm thinning- like, everything looks like it has low health to me right now, so it looks like I'm thinning out the crowd and I'll just be able to stand here and be fine. But the reality could easily be not that at all. 
Oh, it's the sand crabs. Right, so the sand crabs are basically... They do a lot of damage. They're really slow. But they sap a lot of damage, right? So they actually just stand there and take a lot of the damage points you're trying to deal to other more important targets. So as soon as they stop spawning, I'll actually you know, look through the rest of the map. Oh, don't tell me the enemies are still fucking stuck at the top. They are. Those should have despawned. Ah, ah. Alright, let's get this done. Energy cell is not worth the time that I took to get it. Heaven, Grago! Okay. <clears throat> Every four basic attacks, one of them will pierce through all enemies. If I get another one, every three basic attacks. If I get another, every two basic attacks. And if I get a final one, every basic attack will pierce through enemies. At that point, you are basically unstoppable. Because no crowd can ever overwhelm you. You thin them all out evenly. And that's... I was just talking about the problem with, um, with some enemies being in the crowd. Because if an enemy is just so strong, it stands there and takes all your damage... And you just don't deal any damage to the rest of the enemies. You know, GG, well played. A lot of the other ones are just protected, and a lot of those ones are very weak, but they do a lot of damage. Like, Claymen, like some of the bosses, you know. They're glass cannons in that regard. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate. Alright, let's get out of here. Let's make, like, hay and bale. Okay, this is pretty simple. I can just move along this level at my leisure, eh? Um, probably not going to be able to play these shrines. Because I just want to get out of this level as quickly as possible. I don't particularly mind um, the items on this level. It's usually pretty item barren, and the items that it has are usually not particularly interesting. I know that the items aren't actually affected by the level, but I just feel like the items I got on this level are not always the best items. Okay, so after killing this guy, I should have the item that he is standing upon. It should be mine, and it is. Headcrackers, head stompers, whoops. Headcracker is, uh, no, headcrack, it's a card in Hearthstone. My apologies for getting such and such confused. Oh, I may come back to play those shrines to increase my critical hit chance. That is a possibility that distinctly exists. Don't be corrupted, 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 don't be corrupted. do not be corrupted. Oh, right, it's not called corrupter, it's called cremator. Don't be cremator, don't be cre oh, fuck. So this is actually the worst boss that can spawn here, because he can shoot you from anywhere, at any time. He gives zero fucks about things such as range, or accuracy, or decency, or the Geneva Convention, as mentioned earlier. That's a little bit of a throwback for those of you who've been listening actively the whole time. Or maybe that was last episode. I don't know, I recorded these in batch. Hey, alley you and do that one, and then give it a bit of that. Nice, nice, nice. Alright, so I want to get that cream eater out of the way as fast as possible. Because he is just making my life hell right now. Bad. It's not good. Uh, I would like to take a moment to praise RNG Jesus for the fact that I have not gotten a Hive Cluster level this um this recording session because i hate the hive cluster levels they're just not fun in my opinion they're challenging but um you yeah. know there's a lot of platforms that are really easy to fall off and it feels like cheap difficulty rather than actual difficulty is he stuck there 
he's bugged out. He's stuck there. The problem is he takes less damage from the um from the front, so I'm actually fucked for the fact that he's stuck there. Because now I have like no way of doing really good damage to him. Wow. I yeah, I just got F'd in the A by a bug. Nice! Yep. I can't deal with him, because you do more damage from behind. He's shielded from the front. Let's get back to the menu so that I can say, I've been Rhapsody, that's been Risk of Rain, and fuck everything. Also, if you've liked the video, feel free to click like. If you dislike the video, feel free to click dislike. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, subscribe to my channel. If you want to see more videos like this now, there's a link to the playlist down in the description below. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourself, and we'll see you next time.